Good afternoon, April 25th, 2024. My name is David Knox. And I have, not only do I have multiple system atrophy, MSA, but as my father used to say, and I'm pretty sure lots of people say in sports, but go big or go home, you know. We don't, we, we don't opt for little things when it comes to MSA. We want the big things. We want the big problems. And, and in fact, that's literally what MSA is doing to, to most of us in a rather unkind and unfair manner. And I just want to tell you about my uh, re recent trip down to quite a few vocal, vocal specialists uh, in Indianapolis uh, at IU Health. And I had a previous video last week about the uh, interdisciplinary care, the, the, the necessity of having this teams working together proactively to help you. And again, I just want to say kudos to them. Um, it's not every day you go places, especially with a horrible disease like MSA, and you feel great with the out well, with the answers they're giving you, not necessarily the outcome. Um, but you you rest assured that you know they they have a, a firm grip on the situation and they're doing everything they can to help you. So I, I have another appointment on Thursday with swallowing a, a specialist and another test. Also, um, they're going to do a modified barium. Uh, swallow test to, to concentrate up here, which seems seems to be my issue. So originally we went, the doctors were looking at some acid reflux, you know, esophagitis, a lot of inflammation down there, and most of that's gone away. We're going to re repeat that test in early May uh, next month, uh, the actual complete barium test from top down. Um, but the the doctor at IU Health, because of the breathing disorder, uh, because of my <laughs> exhaling improperly, um, and I told her about these situations that I had with, with spasms and not breathing and choking, she, you know, she ordered a whole bunch of tests with, with, with other doctors as well. And we, so far, again, we still have to go back down there this, this Thursday, uh, but so far they've, they've come up with two diagnoses for sure that they are absolutely certain of. Um, one of them is the vocal cord dysfunction. And number two is the or oropharyngeal uh, dysphagia. So, you know, Encyclopedia Britannica has a really nice picture <laughs> that I was able to uh, commandeer. And, you know, remember I went to my doctors and I, and I was saying, hey, I have issues where I'm, I'm not only am I choking, but I, I'm, I'm something right here is not working. I didn't know it was a spasm at the time, but it's not working. It's seizing, and not only can I not swallow, but I can also not breathe at the same time. And my local, again, remember my local neurologist, who's a neurologist, okay, not an ENT, but a neurologist, still a doctor, literally sat there and told me, I think in front of my wife as well, that there's nothing, MSA does not affect anything right here that would cause you not to breathe and not to swallow. And I was, again, I was flabbergasted because I've read that that in case is so. Now, I did not come with these ter these terms here before, but I knew that MSA affects many things in, in the vocal, you know, the vocal cord area, your throat is, is one of those things because that is in fact how we get towards Strider. Strider is one of those um, death blows if you have it where you know you're, unfortunately, your end has come pretty near. Uh, when, you, when you start to see somebody's breathing, usually at nighttime, um, but it sounds like somebody's whistling. It's a much more higher pitch. It's not, it's not wheezing. It's literally like a whistle coming from your throat because everything is near, your throat is narrowing so much that literally you're whistling. You know, that's what it's coming to, like your lips, right? You can't really whistle without narrowing your lips. I, I know some people can do it with their tongues, but we're talking about the lips. So, you know, long story short, the doctors down there were able to differentiate between two completely separate issues that I have. And I'm really happy because I wasn't getting that type of um, expert care, to, you know, drilling down to the actual cause. I was getting more of an overture, more more of an oversight and saying, yeah, well, MSA can do that, it won't do that. It wasn't nothing, nothing specific. And they said, well, you have two problems. And they verified that by doing a throat, a scoping of the throat in the, in the office, which was, again, that's my sister. <laughs> second scoping in probably three weeks on top of the surgical scope uh, two months ago. Um, and a couple of issues, right? So one was with the vocal cord dysfunction, 
the doctor was very happy that MS-8 has not affected my, the, um, really the movement of my vocal cords. Now, we have to be careful when we look at, talk about the vocal cords because um, they are being affected in a different way. For instance, my vocal cords, uh, the walls are thickening and the actual opening is narrowing. So what she what she meant by that was I'm still able to produce speech. I, I can enunciate. I can speak hi. I can speak low. Right. So vocal cords are not directly impacting the vocal cords in that manner. Um, but when she comes to talk about my breathing, my labored breathing, and my uh, exhaling deficiencies, that's a big issue too. Now what she noticed was the um, when the the flap down there by the vocal cords is spasming it is actually she she was very concerned because the little uh what do they call it the i got a picture for you i'll show it to you um this one right let me find it for you so on the video here we see we're able to get a picture of it can't really zoom in too much but the little tonsil looking thing down there um, that helps with the vocal cords is, ha is A, well, has a lot of scar tissue, an awful lot of scar tissue. And she's very concerned that the reason why there's excessive scar tissue, which I believe is the white part you can see, <laughs> the very white piece of it right there, um, on the tips and, and the main part of it, is because this, this, I'm having so many spasms where I can't breathe or swallow at the same time is causing scar tissue. It's causing permanent damage to it. So she says that's a major problem, number one. And number two is the when I go to swallow, it's not, um, it's in a very guarded stage where I'm trying to swallow and it's, it's co collapsing too soon, but it's not closing all the way. And they, she thinks a lot of that is because that's that permanent scar tissue. Um, so there are a couple of fixes that they might be able to do with that with putting some type of fatty tissue on there. Um, and then also um, even trying to open up the, the, the esophagus itself, which is very interesting. That's a whole other video. Um, but the, as far as that, that part of it... Um, as far as the oropharyngeal dysphagia, like it says here, is when the oropharynx is unable to empty into the esophagus, swallowing food. Um, so the spasms that I have for swallowing and breathing are completely separate than the vocal cords. So choking is one thing. The vocal cords, the dysfunction she was talking about, the other doctor, is when the, the vocal cords, uh, the folds close when they should be open. Uh, so mine are very hypersensitive and there's no, there's nothing down there. You, you know, we all have allergies and things. There's, there's irritants and particulates that can cause these things to happen here and there, but but not all the time. Um, and they, they, she, she sees more the fold thickening where it is, it's folding so much, these folds are becoming more increased where they're not supposed to. So. You know, that one is a whole other story of, of how, you know, there's, there's, there are uh, swallowing mechanisms and techniques and therapy to, to help with that as well. Um, and vocal cords is, is also for breathing. And these things all work together to separate food from air. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's, it's, not, usually, it's not common to be choking on air <laughs> and choking on spit choking on no, for nothing, nothing at all. And for people with MSA, that's, that's what causes you know, aspiration pneumonia, is when you aspirate, you, 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 you take down food or pills or anything else you're not supposed to, that goes down to the lungs instead of going down to the stomach. And that's, that's one of the most deadliest causes of, of, of those that have MSA, first and foremost, is in fact aspiration pneumonia, which is something we have to be taken care of. So, you know, she, she talks about the, the vocal cords. Um, there are some exercises we can try, but there's not much else that we can really do to get around that problem. Um, you know, at, at some point with, with people with MSA, depending how bad it is, with the vocal cord dysfunction, you, you end up just completely losing your voice. You, your vocal cords get 
paralyzed, you know, paralysis, and you're not able to speak anymore. And it even comes to the point where the oropharyngeal dysphagia, where you're not able to properly breathe, which comes into like a, a permanent trach, tr you know, uh, tube to, to help you breathe. Um, so, you know, the good news in this is that we have caught this, uh, I'm not going to say early, but we, we've, we've caught the issues, both, both of them, at least that we know of right now, ahead of time. And the doctor is the doctor. I have now. I have three separate doctors for two issues, and they're doing very well with the vocal cords and for, as far as the spasming. Um, you know, that's that's something again. You, know, you you have to do. You have to go to. You have to find a specialist. You have to get to a movement disorder specialist when it comes to MSA, or even Parkinson's or PSP, anything anything like this. You have to get the right people looking for the right things. If you do not have the right doctors looking for the right things at the right time, then you're not going to find them, and you're going to have issues, right? Me, I ignore everything. That's just how I am, right? Broken arm, broken neck, broken brain. Oh, ignore it. It'll be better tomorrow, right? Well, I know as, as, as mainly as I want to be, as much as I want to be, right? As tough and as, as I want to be, I know that not swallowing and the spasming and not breathing is something that's not correct, right? I know that I, I, I know that's wrong. I know there's something serious with that. It's easy for somebody like me, who still drinks as well. I, I, I drink pop, soda, depending where you're from. I still drink liquor. It's easy for somebody like me to, and others to dismiss it as acid reflux. Does acid re reflux actually play a part in this? It can. It could be 100% the issue, or it could be a very my, a little part of the issue, which is why the doctors did a few scopes and tests to say, yeah, there, are, there is esophagitis. You know, you have some ulcer ulcerized areas of the throat, but that is not the underlying cause as to why. So, you know, you have to know your body. You, you have to know what's right and what's wrong and what's serious. And get to not only not only f seek help, but get experts to help you, right? Even if that means traveling two, three, four hours to go get the right people, you have to do it. You know, there's so many of us that live two, three hours away from academic universities that, that can do these things. It's a chore. It's just easier to go to the normal the normal doctor. It's, it's easy. It's easy to go to the local neurologist. But there's a reason why there are specialists. Right, and for your care and my care, we have to go to the right people. So, um, this upcoming Thursday, I'll have a lot more tests. I'm actually having all the tests done Thursday morning, and later that early morning, late morning, I'm going to have a follow up with the doc doctors to go over the test as well. So, I'm going to have another video on Friday, Thursday night or Friday when I get home this upcoming week, um, end of April, 20th, 30th, 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 I think, of April. Um, with, with all the results and what the, what they want to do, whether it's going to be a lot more therapy and or they're not ruling out surgery, but we don't want to do that until we cross that path. So I want to keep this a short video. Um, but so so far <laughs> on this trip of last week, we've got the oropharyngeal dysphagia and we had the vocal cord dysfunction, which are completely separate. And again, you only know these things by going to specialists who know who know how to listen to what you're saying. How you're describing things and you're able to separate these things into what they actually are two separate dis disorders related to msa so again i th i thank you for your continued support and watching and again like and share it i, I definitely want you to share it um and again check us out on the uh um, david and daisy podcast msa crusaders we're on all the just google us we're on youtube uh, spotify uh, podbean pandora <laughs> Sirius satellite all those cool things like that. So uh, we're definitely here raising awareness for MSA. And we want you guys to do better, be better, and get better support. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in about a week.